Hello and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to show you a quick tip, particularly for those of you that are working on animations or short films, on how to make an object either appear or disappear very easily. Uh, the way that I'm going to do this is by actually animating the layer changes or the layer that the object is presented on. This is pretty easy to do, but there's an important thing that I need to point out. Usually, when working with layers in Blender, you're going to be changing these layers down here. And what these are, these are the, your scene layers that represent which layers are currently visible in your 3D view. In this case, you can see that all my layers are selected and that I have objects on layer one, including the currently or last selected object indicated by the yellow dot. But there's another layer section which is included in the Relations tab of the Object Properties here when selecting an object. And these layers indicate which layers this object is present on. And these are the ones that I actually want to animate. So what I want to do is let's first select these two cubes and we're going to hit M to move to a layer and we're going to just choose Layer 2. And then what I want to happen is, and you'll notice that it changed right in here, what I want to happen is for uh, these cubes to, as I scroll up through my frames, to go ahead and uh, appear. So let's first just select this one here. And on frame one right here, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and hover over my layers here and just hit I to insert a keyframe. And you'll notice that it's turned yellow to indicate there's a keyframe there. Well, then let's just jump up to, say, frame two. Let's change this layer over to one and then hit I again. Now, what you should see is as I scroll down to frame one, you can see that both layers are active. As I go to frame zero, only the second layer is active. If I go back to one, the second one's active. And then if I go to two, only the first one is active. So this is a little bit finicky in some cases where you'll notice that as I go backwards, both layers become active. But if I go forward, only the one layer becomes active. And this is something, you know, whether it's a bug or just a odd behavior, it's just something that you kind of need to work around, at least for the time being. And as long as you're aware of it, it's quite easy. So really just to ensure that you've got this right, sometimes it's good just to animate this over three layers. But just to visualize this working, let's just go over to layer one and go back to frame zero, and then we can go back to one. So you'll notice that basically, as we, if we go backwards, the frame changes don't always work. But going, if we go to zero and then go back to one, and you'll notice that all of our objects are invisible. If we go up to two, this object appears and the other one doesn't because the other one we haven't yet animated. So let's go ahead and just hit tilde to view all of our layers again. We can select this one and let's say maybe on frame two, we'll keyframe this so we can either hit I or right click and insert keyframe. And then maybe on layer three, we'll make it move to layer one. So then on, we'll just change layer to one and then we can hit I again, make sure it's turned yellow to indicate there's a keyframe there. And then let's just go back to zero and, or remember go to zero and then back to one. We'll switch back to layer one. And then as we switch to layer, frame one, you should see nothing. Frame two, our first cube pops up. And on frame three, our third cube pops up. And so using only scene layer one, I can very easily control when an object is visible or when it's not visible. Another way to do this that you see used quite often is you actually animating the alpha value of a material. But this isn't very practical uh, because, for one, then you've got a bunch of just invisible objects kind of floating around your scene that are prone to errors. You could uh, run into problems by not animating the specular value or keeping those linked. Uh, you could actually want, maybe you want to actually animate the material value for something, uh, but then you're also using it to hide an object. So then you're using the same thing for two different things and causing a lot of uh, margin for error there that could be avoided by going ahead and animating the layers. Now, this is not a perfect technique for all things. You'll notice that we cannot actually fade in the layer. You know, it's just a split second frame. It's a single frame change. Just by the way that, you know, a layer works, we can't have a layer partially visible. Now, if you were to animate this over a sequence of frames, you could of course fake that, but if you want something to fade in, then you'll probably want to use the material values. Whereas if you want something to just pop up real quick, this is a good way to do it. So nice little tip to kind of help you organize your animation if you've got a lot of objects in there or to do some effects if that's what you're looking for.